What's up, guys? What's going on? Well, you know what? I was predicting this because the last couple of times we were really busy with a lot of people, right? So mm -hmm. I figured this round around would be a lot nice. So welcome to Azure. Hi. Thanks. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. So, what do you guys know about Azure? Well, you two, I know. I've worked in agile environments, but I don't say I'm an agile expert. I've worked in Scrum and Cool. Excellent. Just listening. Just listening. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Well, thank you to coming to Azure and me. And uh, it's all about managing projects, right? Also, I can think of it as a way of life. It's been good to me. And uh, let's see. So right now, I'm a consultant for State of Virginia. I will be coaching their IT team to build digital IDs. So they're hoping to go live soon and uh, we will be setting it up so that you can use your phone as your ID when you get pulled over for doing something dangerous or stupid, right? You can use it at the airport to fly out of Virginia and then fly back into Virginia with TSA and uh, go to DMV and maybe even the one, some of the features we think about is it all depends on what the customer wants. Like the feedback decides what the future is going to be. And it may be like, oh, I want to register using my phone, never coming to DMV, or I want to renew my, my license. It all depends on what people want. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, um, so I'm um, a product manager with uh, medical non process uh, uh, by the name of Altara. Right now, I'm on two projects one is a disease surveillance system uh, for the state of Michigan, and then also um, building a anti-drug resistant organism application for Orange County, California. So um, just kind of, well, Will and I have been um, at least 15 years uh, in in ad, doing some type of agile, close to 20, but um, anyway, that's, that's, that's like, like a million like years of dog years. Yeah, yeah, right. So <laughs> uh, what are we doing? Do we want to just do- We're going to leave coffee today. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah, nice. um, this is the first time. So last time, uh, some of the audience was so inspired by what we were talking. They actually asked Tech Alley to start recording. This is the first time for me to actually record my sessions. Okay, good idea. And uh, I'm not quite sure if you guys are comfortable with this. Because sometimes what we talk about is just some hardships in the company, right? Product development issues or, or personal issues. So. I'm not so sure if this is okay, so when you want to talk about something that's personal, we can always turn it off. Just want to let you know. Depending upon whether you have a hard NDA or not, so long as you leave your, exactly. So long as you leave the company name out of it, you oh, pretty much okay. I'm too late. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. That's right, Harrison. <laughs> right. Have you started you recording, recording yet? Uh, it looks like yeah. It looks, looks like, like it's on. on. We can okay. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, okay. Fine. I just not need to not mention a certain um, secret agency in that may or may not. Sounds good. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is something called lean coffee. It is way uh, in the agile space to find topics, right? We use it in retrospectives. Sometimes we even use it for product planning. Okay. So I got a bunch of stickies and markers and for the next five minutes what I would like to do is ask you guys to figure out if there is a topic in your projects, your portfolio, something that you may want to share, let it be a difficulty or something really cool you just want to talk, right? So we generate topics in a democratic way. Okay, each Sticky per topic. So if you have two, three topics, you can write it in two, three different stickies. Okay, for the next five minutes, go ahead. And those of you who are new here, just want to let you know, this meeting is unique. I'm not here, I like anywhere else, in those ones, how to make money, how to start a business. It's all about managing project in a more efficient way. So that we're not going to get a typical audience of tech out, because, um, I'm not going to teach you how to get more money or how to get capital funds because that's not what this is about. 
it's all about managing the projects. So, so <coughs> some months we get too many people, some months we get a lot less people. Yeah, well, there's no spell check on these things. I know, I am so analog. you do that, we will do a vote. And the vote system, it depends on how many stickies we have we calculate it. And uh, once that is done, we will spend five minutes to talk about the topic that has the most votes, that's voted by you guys. And once we finish our time, five minute time box, we'll make a decision on, do we want to continue? Um, I'm okay either way. 
Or let's move on to the next topic. It's Roman voting, right? And we will never finish the topics, but it is time box until I'm thirsty for whiskey and I'm hungry for food. Okay, which is like what, 12:15 today? Right. All right. 45 seconds. Huh? <laughs> so that's how we do things. And what we are hoping for is that you found a way to either solve your problem or you, you got the feedback you desired on something you want to share. That's it. All right, cool. So who wants to start with your topics? And when you just talk about it, one topic per one minute, and then we put it down. And those of you who actually have some feedbacks, wait till he gets voted, okay? <laughs> I say, why don't we start with John and then go for John? Around that way you Hell yeah! Topic or Clockwise, yeah, baby. Uh, All right, I only yeah, have one topic, right. so might as well start with me. Um, best practice on instituting Scrum and Scrum across multiple domains, so not just software, but other component dishes. This one, yeah. Scrum, 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 Scrum is utilized heavily in multiple. Uh, systems that takes Scrum as a framework and then expands it much, much larger in a scale enterprise world, right? Uh, Nexus, that's one framework. The other one is less safe. Right? No, safe is not Scrum Scrum. And then you have Agile at scale, that's by Jeff Sutherland. Let's believe it or not, they actually find Scrum Scrum as an anti pattern. I'm crazy, right? So, this is the first topic. Anyone else? Next one? Uh, I'm not on this level of no, no coding. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Oh, they shouldn't have me go first. So. <laughs> well, he's I'm, like expert, so he just makes it so much worse. Don't worry about it. The him. reason they had to go first is that he has time to write something. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, I'm, oh, oops, shit. I'm a fine artist, uh -huh. and I've painted a lot mm -hmm. through the years, and, mm -hmm. and I'm, uh, I've got a lot of different ideas. and trying to make some money with uh, the way things are changing. Yeah. I'm not going to do AI. I, I want to be the, the not. other side of it, you know, basically. Yeah. But I got uh, one idea that I've been dealing with for a while. It's um, just a web idea. It's uh, called Your Birthday Star. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's uh, I have the website, Birthday and I've done Star. a few things right. for that. And um, it's an effort to try to make a little cash but also provide a service for people so that they can send it along in a variety of ways facebook or youtube for their birthday um, for their friend's birthday it's a, basically a star connection that is maybe 21 light years away mm -hmm. just an interesting connection with it, all all kinds of links to so within the project management scope right uh, what kind of a feedback would you like to get out of the birthday star <clears throat> well, I, I have a, um, a demo. I just am kind of stalled trying to figure out what to do. But whether it would be best to go with YouTube or, or try uh, to do a Facebook uh, yes. connection, word of mouth. I'm not going to pay any money to do this, but right. it could be a real fun thing for a lot of people to use. And so there's so, other stuff people do. I think. Right. So for your birthday star, maybe in this scope of work, uh, working on project, is like what is the best way to advertise it? With minimum amount of cost. Right. Okay, that's a great one. Anyone else? No, I mean, space.com and NASA is the focus of those services. Portrait yeah. West? That's fine, too. Yeah, okay. Go ahead, one, one, How about that one, too? One minute sales pitch. Well, yeah, people used to um, buy portraits. Mm -hmm. There was Portrait South, and um, people don't seem to do that as much anymore. Um, there's a lot of people doing art, and there's things we can do with our phones and prints. And uh, tattoos are more interesting to most people. They want tattoos on their skin instead of their kids' portraits on the walls. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to do a thousand of them a month, you know. <laughs> I'd like to get more business for that. Okay. I have a website uh, developing with that as well. So maybe using <clears throat> agility to figure out how can we get more portraits. Advertise so you can garner more business. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, one more. And the other thing is, uh, you know, as an artist, I I've had a blog for a while. It's called RealLiveArtist.com, mm -hmm. and I've shown some of my work, but I should use it more like a, a way to uh, 
express what's going on in the world and some tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. And also, um, one of the things I wanted to do is critique paintings for basically for for uh, young artists or developing artists mm -hmm. to show them a Monet, for example, and it's tear it apart. Actually, you know? mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a good painting and it stands on its own, but you know, take a look closely and you'll see that his figures are maybe not correct. You know, his perspective is off a little bit, or his, his shadows, whatever. Just little critiques of uh, of what we call masters, you know, but in a fun way to help people understand that if you want to paint, you can you can do it. You don't have to be perfect. Okay. So for that particular website, maybe perhaps you're looking for feedbacks on how we can help improve that on the basis of how we can critique people. I think like a feedback? And I was going to say, if you think about all three of those uh -huh. and what you're trying to do, you've got kind of multiple irons in the fire, but you're trying to figure out like what 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 should you spend your time on, right? Promote. And, and Promotion. what's the like how how are you going uh, to figure out which one of these avenues is really going to be priority priority versus promotion, right? Well, so what you thinking? The middle of ours probably would be a day later. Offer right. thing is start start thing we set it up and leave it alone. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about make that one topic and maybe just about priority promotion. That could be. Um, that that will fall into the figure like, out. how we can handle projects. That's just lots of them, right? Right. You're you're you have limited resources as in yourself, but you have kind of multiple ideas that you're trying to vet right. out and figure right. figure which one. So that's, yeah, like that's priority. Exactly. Right. And I can do it all myself, basically. I mean, I, I can video it and I do the web stuff. And so that's the beauty of living in the analog world. You can just put them together on one topic. <laughs> okay. Cool. Do that, digitals. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. um, well, this is my big one. Uh, basically, when you're choosing or you're starting a project, uh, how do you choose between the different methods of agile? What are the pros and cons, basically? Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like waterfalls from extreme programming, Kanban, and I'm sure a yeah. host of others. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, what skills should an engineer, a uh, coding engineer, learn to get to the point where they could be a technical product manager? That's number two. Technical product manager. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Technical product manager. And. Uh, how do you get better at past time estimations? Because that's past huge. time estimation, yes. And how do you manage a team when you can program but don't know the stack that the team is working on? Say that again? How do you, how do you manage a team as a, as a scrum master or a technical program manager or somebody, but you've, you program, but you don't know like the, the stack? Like, let's say that you're a JavaScript script engineer and you're working in a Go language or these a are, These are new people you did not hire. You just got assigned to this team yes. and you don't know their skill set. Exactly. Uh, how do you solve that? Wait, you don't know their skill set or you know their skill set and it doesn't include your step? It, basically, I know their skill set, mm -hmm. but I don't know, I don't have the same skill set. So, mm -hmm. oh, like cross functional. Cross functional. So, like, uh, if I, um, I can program in one language, JavaScript mm -hmm. or TypeScript. And the team that I'm working on is working in like C sharp or uh, Rust or Go or one of the newer um, uh, newer languages. Flavor of the month. Yeah, exactly. Flavor of the month. Um, uh, although you know some of those flavors are starting to look really good. Enjoy the Baskin Robbins. But the um, but the whole uh, thing is you know you know the skills in managing. Um, do you need like to how much do you need to know about the actual tech stack ecosystem as, 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 a a, as a manager. As a manager for that team, right? Yeah. Not as a scrum master, not as a product owner. Yes, as okay. a manager yeah. for that team. As a manager, so that's the scope. Got it. Okay. By the way, since you know TypeScript, you know Angular then? I know Angular 1.5, right? Angular.js. Uh -huh. I have dabbled in Angular 2 and up, but um, I mean, I'll take a job. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I'll take a job in any language. I, 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 can, I know what a directive is, I know how to do that. Not my preferred framework, but yeah. for the right price, which is any price. Hey, all I can tell you is when I was in my 20s, I even learned a shitty language called Cofusion, okay? Uh, <laughs> no shame in this, okay? No shame. No shame. 
Oh, I don't I, know. I, I so will. I <laughs> work, I've worked in a shop that used Cold Fusion as its back in language. I am so sorry. It's okay. Well, we used to. Uh, well, it, it was why I was hired because we basically moved from Cold Fusion from everything to Cold Fusion as back end, and then we used uh, React with front end. And we needed React. So I think back in 2019, I checked on where it is the Cold Fusion conference, right? It's like somewhere in Idaho at Holiday Inn. That's how shitty that language is. Because, so. Okay. It's, it's not that bad. No, I like they the just had it here. Huh? They just had it here at Mirage this year. Yeah, that's <laughs> Adobe Max. Uh huh. Last time I checked on the Adobe uh-huh. Max, they no longer have any chats with Cold Fusion. Oh, really? Because there was a Cold Fusion conference. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Oh, my yeah, yeah, that might be not program. They're releasing some work. It's kind of becoming the new Cold Oh, you tell me, homie. I'm coaching a bunch of mainframe programmers. All right, well, you know, <laughs> I know it's not about me. It's about you guys. Go for it. All right. So my question is actually more along the creative line, I guess. Uh huh. Um, so lately, I've been working, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like you know, this algorithm stuff and uh, re-engineering things. There comes a point where you kind of get stuck. Okay, it's almost like a writer's block, but it's not, right? Like in other words, you understand the problem, you know the problem space. But every solution you come up with, you know it's wrong. Like, it seems like the problem is just too big to mm-hmm. get the whole thing in memory. Like, your project is so complicated at a certain point yeah. where and there are so many sort of tendrils, right, where everything affects everything else. You get to a point where you get, it's not a paralysis, but it's just every solution you come up with, you feel, you feel like it's wrong, uh-huh. right? Okay. And my question yeah. is, how do you get unstuck? Like, you're sitting there writing the code, you know it's total crap. <laughs> right? But you know as you write it, you know this is garbage. Yeah. And if you show it to anyone, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna yeah. like, not want to do that. But, uh, yeah, what are you gonna say now? Well, it sounds like you're in what, what is known as an Edison loop. A what loop? Edison. Wait, wait, Edison. Well, well, I guess Edison I'll tried it. Yeah. 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 Well, 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 the gist of the question yeah. is how do you get unstuck? Okay. How do you get unstuck? Because at this moment in time, is it my so only solution is to get up, walk away, do something else. But the caveat to this is that you're on a deadline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So now you're really stuck. And how the solution you that you have doesn't okay. fully solve the problem. Gotcha. And you know you're about to invest in it. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse as you go. And you can't find yeah. all the edge cases, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That right there. Okay, okay. perfect. Right. So yeah, I'm back on that, but I'm gonna wait. Yeah, that's fine. Talk about the MP complete. What? Uh, we have two more yeah, orange ones. Are you talking about the complete problem? Oh, yeah. those are yours. Are you so talking, talking about, about the deterministic problem? Like, complete problem. Not necessarily. I don't even have a mathematical problem. Hold off, hold off. We're gonna talk about it. If you vote for it, just remember the vote, okay? It's right here. All right, go for it. Is blockchain tech going to be adopted by the government as a currency, and how do you take advantage of that? And then also, how do you get into a mindset for coming up with good startup ideas with a great product? Gotcha. So the first one is, is blockchain going to be adopted by the government? And uh, for how do you make money off of that? For backing digital currencies. Yeah. How do you get into a mindset of startup? Okay. Got it. All right, Harrison. Oh, you got two, uh, man. Yeah, mine are just, uh, I was just trying to create a conversation. So, uh, do you track research? And so, if you're, if you've got a, you're either doing Kanban or Scrum or some, some type of agile framework, um, do you want to explicitly track the research? And then also, um, just kind of along the lines of team composition for development, like just kind of some, uh, uh, maybe some of the things that you've experienced as far as like a good combination of like full stack front end, back end, and QA, for a just team. for a, for a development for team. a development team. Yeah. Okay. What is the best composition of <coughs> a development team? Yeah, that, just, that you've experienced. Do we? Oh, from your experience, not what you read. Right, right. Personal your experience. personal experience. Yeah. Ooh, that's the story, right? Mm-hmm. Do you track research? Yeah, so that's the, um, like either doing uh, research ahead of a feature or, you know, technical research, like, um, 
This is actually a huge problem. I know, that's, why, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, it's actually related to my question, I think. Yeah, well, here's a funny thing. For my team that I'm coaching, they have gone through a command and control structure mm -hmm. so much, they want to log every minute, every hour of what they do. Even oh, when we do well, refinement, good. such as track, you know, doing the research on how we do things, they want to track it. And when I tell them, you don't have to. They freak the hell out. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We gotta try this. It has to be a bad one. It's insane. I cannot stand it. Do you have your right. philosophy of your entire project? Huh? State driven digital ID. Isn't that the whole point? Uh, yeah. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven topics. So divided by because the new people. Everyone gets four votes. The way we do it is grab the marker and put a dot on the topics. This is one topic, okay? Put a dot on it. And it's an honor system. If you cheat, I am not gonna know. Four dots per person. If something that's very passionate for you, put all four dots there. You can spread your four dots however you want. Three on this one, one on that, or two on this one, and one each on everything else. The ones with the most vote will be the first one we're gonna talk about for five minutes, okay? After five minutes, if there's more passion, we still want to talk. We don't feel like there is closure. We do a Roman voting, okay? You guys decide which topic starts and when the topic ends. Come on in, have a seat. Go for it, guys. Vote time. Uh, can we vote for our own? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You so can I'm vote for your own if you really want to talk about something and try and. Put all four dots on your table. Yeah, you whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> It's all yours, please. And please don't mark it on the table because these are permanent markers. Just put it on the stickies. <coughs> I don't know, Will, with these tables, how, how could they tell? Yeah, that's a good point. We just put another sticky on top of the dot, right? Hide it. Sticky. And shameless plug, those of you are looking for a software developer, my son is an excellent programmer, just like me. Well, I'm not anymore. Uh, he's looking for a job. He's got two years experience. Let me know. He can do .NET, C++. He has done some data mining work, uh, artificial intelligence work for a company called Workday, right? He graduated, decided to travel the world and get some girlfriends, and now he's ready to earn money so I can kick his ass out. So let me know. I really want to get him out of my house. So, does you guys got any positions, developers? Does he understand internals of OSs and program languages? Standard what? Does he understand internals of operating systems and program languages? He took some classes. That kid is really fast to learn is things. It, yeah. is, it all, is it all on Windows or does he also do classes? As also what? Unix, right? Yeah, he does both. Yeah, he's done both. I mean, he's done .NET. He's done web stuff. So, yeah. Okay. I have his resume. If you're interested, I can email it to you. Is it, does he work with Python at all? Or he has done Python, yes. Okay. Yes. He hasn't done R. That's one thing he hasn't done. Okay. Right? But think about it this way. If he knows C++, he knows memory overflow problems, floating pointer issues. Yeah. He's been solving those already. And then also we're uh, building the user kernel uh, in our... On the OS? Um, well, it's a decentralized OS. We put we, we a, a first class or meta class object model on the blockchain. You can do that. Very young. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what I, yes, I'm so sorry, I came in late. Uh -huh. Where are you in this? You got four votes. Okay. Take a look at the topics. The ones you think you want to talk about, put those votes on. You can spread them across four stickers. Oh, all these written or ones? you can put all four on one or put three on one and put one on another. The Here's the thing, since you're the last one, we know you're cheating if you put five dots. So we're right. watching. <laughs> some, some value. Thank you for coming back to me. Can, can I make a suggestion? Since they're tied together, your review critiquing titles the other two. Make that a more, we'll make that either a sliding scale or a three, and then hook it up. Yeah, that would be different. Yeah, and I hook up with all the archives and various universities to yes. propagate. Okay, let's see. It'll it'll self propagate after a short time. 
Because if you get them while they're still in school, they're not going to be used to the idea. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven. Getting a free critique from somebody who's actually These are three done it no might drive no them later on to the other shots. One, two, three, four, five. Or at least give them a little bit of mouth. says they need something instead of, yeah, I know where you can get that. So the, this is the Kanban board a bit the international disorganized, right? So you have ready to talk about. We did our refinement. We had our discussion. My point is, out. people might get confused and think it's something like that. Well, <laughs> aren't you supposed to make some sort of hand sign to tell us to shut up? <laughs> yeah, I got a messed up shoulder today. Yeah, uh, uh, you've got Harrison. Harrison can do it. Unfortunately, the hand sign to get you to shut up is not uh, something that he wants to show on the reporting, right? Yeah. Well, th there there is one method that coaches and scrum master like to use. And this is our backlog. This sure is the highest do. priority. <laughs> We're gonna put it over here, and this is in progress, and this is the done area, okay? So we're gonna talk about this on the first five minutes. And the, the, the part that John talks about is when Scrum Master is trying to control a big group, what we ask people to do is, when you see me raising my hand, raise your hand. And everybody starts raising hands, and things get really weird, and then we all quiet down, so we, Get the focus back in the group and we focus on it. It's a simple psychological technique we use. It, it works really well in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't name the topic yet. Okay, I'm sorry. The topic <laughs> is how do you get better at task estimations? Task mm -hmm. estimation is something we do a lot in the scrum and extreme programming. In the extreme programming, we use user stories. Well, actually, Combine uses it too, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about relative estimation. So I'm going to try to facilitate, but sometimes I just shut up and let you guys go for it. Uh, we got five minutes. All right. Please. So I have a somewhat silly answer that turned out to actually be reasonably correct. Um, my last supervisor had said to me, uh, whenever you decide how long you think something's going to take, double your estimate and then increase the unit. Absolutely. So if you think it's going to take two days, you quote four weeks. Yep. Whenever my developers tell me that, I absolutely yeah. had uh, two to three X on it immediately. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I thought it was kind of silly when you said it, and it is. And especially for larger blocks of time, you know, when you go from weeks to months or years, it gets mm -hmm. bad. That's absolutely how waterfall project managers use that anti pattern because you have no choice. No, they didn't know. That does work. So that reasonably well, so long as you, you, you don't know your team's actual capacity and performance capability. Once you, if you actually have a good feel for, uh, doesn't matter if you're using story points or uh, even total old school lines of code, doesn't matter what your metric is, once you get a feel for your team, you can actually compress that a lot and be more realistic about it. This is one of the reasons why in uh, DevOps and in most variations of scrum like uh, estimation uh, methodologies, you include at least one of the development team so that they can actually get a real developer. Yeah, it's going to take the X amount of lines of code. And then you always remember that programmers tend to be you know, rather full of themselves, so they always overestimate their capacity. So, so does that mean when you hear a developer give you a number? You reduce it by order of magnitude and divide it by two. Is no, no, you don't no, no, increase, 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 increase yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it but haven't they done what you're describing? And then you're trying to back it out into the actual. Um, no, no. Okay. because they're wrong. Yeah, okay. and, and and that's the point. And they're not overestimating; they're just wrong. Right? And and unless you're really got a, a long-term, firm, agile environment going on, uh, they're not the ones that actually make the estimation call. It is the either the scrum master and PO if you're doing scrum pure work, or the T, uh, TPO, or the TPM, so technical project, product owner, technical project manager, and even the project manager, if they know their ass from all the around. Okay. Um, halfway through. Halfway through. And yeah. Uh, uh, they're the ones that actually make the determination. Mm -hmm. And if they know their team, they can actually get pretty accurate on what it was, barring the incidental hookup 
that uh, you know they don't realize that you know humans involved. There's going to be issues always. So All right, next uh, he raises his hand, and I'll tell no, him next. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It's, okay, your, go for it. it's your sticky. So my main thing is that yeah, doubling it or tripling it or adding in extra time. It's always better to overestimate than underestimate because business people are making decisions based on when something's going to be ready, and they can always they can always use something earlier than prescribed. But if they make promises to the higher ups to their customers that this will be ready by X, that's bad. But the problem is also that. Um, if you wildly overestimate and you do so constantly, then you are not, what's going to happen is that the business people either aren't going to start taking you seriously, they're going to start like saying, oh, it doesn't take this long, it takes this long, you have this long, do it that time or you're fired, uh, or, and, and they just can't make good business decisions. Like if you tell them we'll have this product ready in three months, and it's like, well, our competitors are coming out in one month. Can you do it in that time? Right. right. So I'm going to change things a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to focus on people who doesn't talk much. And you're 100% right. And here's another piece. Why do you want to live in the in a world of lies? Doubling your estimation just because you know everybody's lying? Don't you want to live in a better world? That's yeah. what I live in. Okay? It's so what? And also, you raise your hand and you're back. So okay, let's go. No, actually, it's kind of good. You you kind of uh, narrowed down the scope of, of your problem, um, and it's really kind of communicating with the business what can be accomplished, right? Um, so just and it, you're trying to do it through estimation, but of course, like the further out that we we estimate, the worse we are, right? As far as and then there's always the the tools like John was saying with the Fibonacci numbers, right? And but I think your problem sounds like you know being able to provide uh, you know management to some degree with some with what you can put out as a team in the short term and the long term. Right? So I'm not sure if it's if it's more of like a communication and understanding of you know with them, you know that you can your team can help provide more information in the shorter term, but. Being able to say this entire project will be done by this date is really not a reasonable thing to, to do. Okay, so we have reached our five minute time. This topic is interesting with the most votes, so we get to do a Roman vote. If you want to continue one more time, give me this. If you don't care, give me this. And if you say, no, I really want to talk to the next topic, give me that. Okay, I think the thumbs up with it. I'm going to set it for five more minutes. Go ahead. What kind of vote was that again? What did you call Roman votes. Roman votes. Yeah. Like, see. Off with his head. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think, probably, you know, my, my first thing was just a, you know, something that my supervisor had said. But I think the heart of the problem goes to the request being ambiguous. And I've heard things, I've heard it said, really, and I think it's true, that the primary difference between senior and junior developers is the ability to take an ambiguous problem and turn it into a solution, okay? And the, I think the difficulty in the estimation comes from you think you understand the problem, right? And as you start getting into the weeds, you suddenly find out there was a whole ton of things that you didn't consider. You thought you knew the tech stack that was going to be required, now it's deprecated, or there's a, you know, for some reason you can't use exactly that stack, or it won't run on the hardware they gave you, or whatever the reason, and that, I think, because there's so many unknowns at the beginning, it makes it really, really difficult to estimate. I think that's the sort of heart and soul of the Agile thing is take the smallest piece you can do, figure out how long it's going to take you, do it again and again and again until you're done. And so you can't estimate the whole project. You can only estimate the next step, right? And the bigger the next step you choose, the higher your margin of error. Uh, I, I have a know? solution for that. Huh? But I have a solution for that. But finish your thing, and then John goes next. Yeah, that was there is time, I will give you guys my That was it. I mean, the point is that I think the, the difficulty in estimation comes from a poor description of the, or understanding of the problem. I'm either the guy describing or the guy providing the estimation. Okay, uh, two seemingly dissimilar uh, points. So I'm going to address the one. I've worked for the other side, you know, the business side. Uh, multiple times, and what developers often are completely unaware of 
because they don't take business courses or anything else resembling as a basic rule, is it's not about the time frame that you've had and everything else like that, but whole other domains of the business are reliant upon good information and scheduling. Uh, you can bankrupt a company by mis advertising and marketing a product that's either not going to be there or, believe it or not, sometimes it's bad if it shows up too early. So these factors have to be in. That's why, that's why we have a whole other non-technical people working in uh, most of the medium to large environments. So the closer you get to being a true enterprise, the more you have layers and the more your schedule impacts their schedule. Very real in planning and in cost of doing business and investing the resources on the business side. The other thing is, that's my other part, is this is also the beauty of using an iterative environment because you can do a minimum viable product target and then build on top of it, making it more robust as you get more information, the weeds are cut back, you find out what you need, and uh, if you're doing it really per agile, your customer, and hopefully also the ultimate end user, have been involved and get input because they never know exactly what they want when you start the project anyway. But by doing an iterative factor, you can build with a minimum viable and then add to it until it's just, you know, best of breed for the business sector. So we have one more person. Yeah, so I'm, I'm deep into this right now. I mean, uh, uh, finally, we're just finishing the implementation of a layer one blockchain and, and new crypto. Um, but we had to do a lot of uh, uh, things in here. And I guess the difference comes, what everybody's talking about is, well, are there actually tool sets available for what you're doing? Or do you have to build the tools and you're going to no, I'll right. uh, give you my answer. I actually okay. was working for a water company for Ernst & Young project, uh -huh. about $20 million. And within two sprints, I already know when he's going to get and I told them, then I left the company, and they exactly ended when I told them. Okay. Yeah, that's not uh, so, the case here. I'm five months behind right yeah. now on uh -huh. finalizing right. algorithms. Uh, right. So, I, problem, right? I mean, so. if you're a project manager, you should be very freaking tired of, like, programmer says three months, I'm going to double it. Mm -hmm. And then my manager is going to double it. And then my sales guy is going to double it to yeah. tell the client, oh, it's not five months, it's five years. And then you're yeah. still going to be delayed, right? Let me tell you how I do things. Okay. In an agile way. Mm -hmm. Okay, first question I have is Do you guys know how tall this guy is? Know what? Do you know how tall this guy is? I've never met you so high. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm gonna, can you stand up for me? Alright, if I'm wearing flip flops, I'm 5 foot 8. Do you know how tall he is now? I'm 5 foot 8? He's yeah. probably 5'9. Take your hat off. So, <laughs> hat off. this is called relative sizing. And this yeah. is the most important thing you need to know in the agility. Second thing you need to know, most importantly, is definition of done. Yeah. You do any kind of agile framework, definition of done is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Because a pull driver will tell you it's done. Okay, does it work in a server? No, it compiled on my machine. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's done. What you, as a team, you need to lock down what is the definition of done. Did you compile it? Okay, did you push it out to production? Or did you make sure the QA passes it? Did you go through compliance so you actually pass all the cybersecurity tests? If you have a credit card, do you follow the government mandated PCI compliance? By the way, it's a law in Nevada. Did you pass that? Once those are done, your single slice of feature needs to go to production. And how long does it take? Make sure you have a lockdown definition of done. Now you have to do those two things in place. Relative sizing, you can kind of know. Human beings are horribly at accurate estimation, mm -hmm. but in our brain, we're really good at relative sizing. When I'm standing next to him, you know exactly how tall he's gonna be if I tell him my numbers, right? Mm -hmm. But if somebody comes in with a gun, everybody is six foot eight, because he's robbing those convenience store, right? Everybody's six foot eight. So you gotta remember that, okay? okay? Now, how do you do this then? Every work, you cut it into small sticky notes, small chunk of work. Everything has to be small and you finishable, right? Instead of baking a whole cake, you slice it into a small slice of cake. Now, every single piece of cake that's on a sticky note or on your fancy software called Jira or ADO, whatever you use, you do a rough estimate. You can use Fibonacci number, 
If you don't want to Google that, just use t-shirt sizes. Small, medium, large, extra large. If it's extra large or XXL, cut them into small, medium, or large. Okay? Now your team grabs something, say, for this particular time box, two week spread, one month spread, one week spread, whatever it is, the team decides, well, I'm gonna work on these three things. It's a small, it's a medium, and another small. You run it. See if they can actually finish those things. Now you know. After one sprint, you know exactly what your team's capacity is, and it's the worst. Why? Because it's the first time the team just got formed. There is a lot of things to smooth out. From that point on, the team is going to collaborate, get better. If you coach them well, not micromanage them, inspire them, grow them, nurture them, they're going to get better and faster. So the timeline is only going to get short. But you already estimated everything. Small, medium, large. You found out two smalls in the medium in a week, they can get it done. Okay, now apply that sprint. Okay, it's two weeks. Put it all into everything else. Put a number on it. And you can actually, within the sprint, to figure out how long it's going to take you. There's your labor cost. No. <laughs> no. It depends on what you're doing. I, I agree if you have simple problems. I agree uh, if you have tools that are in there. Simple projects. Those. You can and I agree if you're not trying to solve NP complete problems. So simple projects, you can use waterfall. You don't need Scrum. Scrum right. is actually to help you solve complex. Well, problems. I think simple, but I might have my definition of simple. Simple is uh, uh, programming a database, not building a database, but programming it. Right. right. So, um, but building a database is a project that. From uh, from uh, from scratch, not working anything. Right. Right. I totally agree with you. Yeah. But complexity is where agility happens, right? There's a reason why companies like Apple, Google, mm -hmm. Amazon doesn't use waterfall. Mm -hmm. Only uses agility-based software development. Because they have all the tools. They didn't have the tools. They started from garages. No, so did we. Right. And right. 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 When we were yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, they, Amazon started in the garage, Google started in the garage. Eventually they have data warehouses, but they imply this exact same way, same thinking, using relative estimation to solve trillion dollar company projects now. Yeah. Right? You don't hear them saying, we failed, right? You hear them, we succeeded. But the question now is, using this method is not e easy, it's hard as hell. And you really have to correct, have to have the correct mindset. You cannot cut corners. All these things you have to follow. If you don't, um, I can tell you this. I'm a consultant in this environment, mm -hmm. right? I told you where I consult right now. I can tell you this. About 70% of all companies that say they use Agile, they're fragile. They inject mm -hmm. so much command and control, it literally destroys the fundamental belief that I have to do Agile. It's just not going to work. I can guarantee you, any one of those companies says, you, I do Scrum right now, okay? None of them are actually doing it right. So, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, I, I absolutely get what you're saying, but the whole point of Agile methodology, and it is a methodology, right. is it is the methodology by which complex, massive problems get broken down into those simple problems. Right. Now understand that it was, it was a lot different when we were modifying Python and, uh, and, and doing the things that we had to do there. That was able to be done in Agile, right? We could set tasks for the developers and then meet those tasks within a certain time. When we were uh, um, you know, on, the go, on the go side, when we were uh, uh, building the class manager infrastructure, uh, the, the, the kernel user, thing, the user kernel, that was again, it was a task that could be set out and have a time set. But once you start to get into the algorithms, and you're trying to make complete, uh, when you're trying to do, get to a, a, to solve a solution that has no solution, so, like you were talking about, right? Right. That's where, as you're going into well, it, you can't do small sections. You have to go, okay, I know that I need my accounts, and my shop, and my, um, and my transactions, and my shards, and everything has to be known, yeah, so and moved around, right? I, I want to make this. Comes in. So I think it's the difference between yeah, we two went, things. We went past five minutes yeah. twice now, mm -hmm. so I need to know if you guys want to keep this topic, because it's 11.47, we may only have time for one more topic. Uh, want to know. Give me the Roman votes. Continue. Oh, okay, we're done. Thank you so much for declaring this done. That's our definition of done.
and we have two more with five volts. Team comp uh, composition for development, or how do you get unstuck, especially with tight deadline? Any one of those you guys want to talk about? Team. First one. First one, got it. In progress. Team composition for development, start. What would, how, how does the question work? So, um, uh, if you want to frame it around building uh, uh, like a website, let's say. Just oh. like some, uh, mostly web development, let's say. Uh, so, what's uh, the ideal team composition? What's the ideal team composition that you've experienced? Um, like between uh, whatever you have, like if it worked out that you had two QA folks, uh, like a front end developer, back end, you know, with an architect, like what? Okay. Five nice guys, my asshole. Honestly, yeah. the best things I've seen were in the army. <laughs> okay. You know, go wrong. Right. And what did I see? <laughs> what, what was it? IT, I'm talking about IT. Yeah. Um, it was basically. Uh, Got, actually, it's kind of funny because this particular team was two guys who were brand new trying to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. One guy who was just about to get released, so he was basically done. Uh, and an officer about to get promoted trying to score political points. Mm -hmm. And so, that's, um, that's you know, it, it was kind of interesting in the sense that the dynamic, like everyone had these sort of career based motivations where. Uh, I don't know, I guess the motivation had nothing to do with the projects themselves, and it had nothing to do with the company, per se. Like, everyone was personally motivated to, for whatever, you know, whatever would advance their career. Yeah, correct, you know? So, I remember this scope was all about your personal experience, so that's perfect. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, I'll go this way. Yeah, okay. Please, please, go. Oh, so uh, one of the things that I think this question is considering is, um, I, I think that the team composition matters less so long as, like there is no perfect team composition. What you should do is take the team that you have. That you, if you know you're going to need a front-end engineer, hire a front-end engineer. If you know you're going to need a back-end engineer, hire a back-end engineer. But then at that point, before you hire anybody else, figure out what the strengths and weaknesses are of those people. I'm not just talking about like coding. Like I'm not talking about like, oh, this person really does good CSS animations, or this person does really good algorithmic work. Try to figure out what they're good at. Like, are they good at uh, breaking down a project uh, with a lot of functions into small functions, I mean? And then what you do is you keep track of those strengths and weaknesses, and you try and find people rather than based on their tech stack. Try to find people with compatible strengths and weaknesses. If there is somebody with a clear weakness in something, and I don't mean like they can't do it, just trying to do it with tires them out and it makes them feel weak, well, then you want to find somebody who has that as a strength, which means that is something they really enjoy and really, um, really motivates them so that you can delegate the tasks um, not according to stack, but according to what keeps people motivated, what keep, keeps people going. Um, that's really, uh, I think the best team that I was ever working on was... Um, a motivated team. What? A motivated team. A motivated team, yeah. Um, I think you have to look at the environment because it's too generic a question right there. Uh, if you're in a situation where you are in an assembly line environment, of which there are many, whole bunch of companies where that's all they do is day in, day out, slap in component parts on a website, call it good and send it out. Uh, it works itself out in that sort of thing. You don't really have to worry about it because uh, the people who are paying for that sort of assembly line thing don't really have a lot of investor uh, investment in it, regardless of what they might feel when they get up in the morning or not. If they don't uh, invest in a better website, uh, it could be, you know, end up looking like a government website and you can all print at this moment for that. But the ones that actually have invested the resources and whatnot and are looking for a quality function as opposed to an assembly line, quick as you can get it out, that's where it becomes a little bit more interesting. And you're probably not going to get the perfect team at the outset. You might have to actually run several people in and out. I'm going to reference Spotify 
uh, pre this year because they had a meltdown like many others did. But uh, before that, uh, there isn't a single person on their actual web-facing environment that actually was there when they actually launched or through any of the major years there because they're constantly shifting out for better kind of situation. So it's the environment and the resources that you have allowed for it. If you don't have the resources for it, you take what you have and you use it. If you do have the resources and it is your facing business, then you invest in it and you find best of breed of whatever. Do we want to keep going? Okay. Oh, oh it's a mix. Oh, okay. Uh, one thumbs up, two, three thumbs up, and we got one down, two down, a lot of, oh, three down. Oh, it's a tie, and we have a lot of no cares. I need one go. There we go. Done. Nice. We, the team has decided this is done, and we're going to jump on the next one with the five votes. It's right here. Whose how question was that? Oh, that was mine. You know, how, 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 do you, yeah, hang out either, it. how do you get unstuck, especially with a tight deadline? This is the algorithm one, right? Specifically, um, you have well, This one actually ties back into the first one that we were doing, which okay. where... I'm going to start now. Five yeah. Minutes, go. Yeah. So this one ties back into the first one, which, you know, as you point out, this is kind of where you can't seem to break it down into small enough problems mm -hmm. such that you can get individualized units of work. But every time you try, you end up affecting other parts of the system, either having to go back and rework or whatever, and you get into a spot where there seem to be, there were, first of all, there are dependencies that you didn't know existed, number one. And number two, every time you write a solution, it, it's never good enough. In other words, like as far as the definition of done goes, like it's it's a very brittle you know system. You can't redesign the whole thing at this point, and so you get sort of frozen or stuck. Gotcha. I have and a... the feeling, at least for me, is kind of like you don't have enough memory in your head to even hold the whole problem. Yeah. And we're looking for our techniques that kind of enable you to offload some of that. Mm. Yes. Yeah. There's you know? a yeah. There's an extreme program <coughs> talk there, but I'm gonna hold off. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of where we're at right. right now. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy. It's mapped out, right? We've <clears> got the, the flow chart and everything done. But as you're going through each one of the different processes that has to happen, and then you come up on something, you go, oh, wait a minute. This doesn't work now. I have to go back and rearrange some of those things. And that's really where the problem comes in. When you're doing algorithms, it's not about, okay, I know how to get from here to here. It's, I have an idea from here to here, but you know, like one of the problems that we had real quick, um, we were just going to make a call and as, as long as one node acknowledged back, then we would know that all nodes had it. But, well, what if the leaders are colluding and they're only sending messages to each other and we're getting one on this node that's sending back, yeah, I got it. And then it allows the leaders to continue to put transactions into an account that they should have, that should have been released so, from them. You have right. like so it's those problems. Yeah. yeah. It's two problems. We don't have a solution yet. Anybody right. have a... Ideal solutions? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, this okay, we have a lot of hands. I don't know about who, who, yeah. who picked that first. So you haven't talked, so you go first. Go. But, well, um, is it more so an idea like um, the technical ability is harder? So maybe you might need to get people who are more inclined to the issues that you have versus there's like a, a problem in like actually how you guys try and go up and solve it. It's actually a scope problem because even explaining the problem to someone with the technical skill, in, in the ability to explain the problem, you have to solve it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a um, weird, it, it's a yeah, weird, uh, so it's, it's purely it. technical, right? Huh? It's, it's still technical, but it's technical. so big that you just can't. So it's technical, but it's yeah. algorithmic. You have to you have to know the relationships and map it. It's, it's like map it. It's know kind of like right. you and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Technical domain yeah. knowledge and algorithm related. Yeah. It, it it's basically a complete algorithm, within the scope of computer yeah. science. That's right. what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's project related. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, the, the non-deterministic polynomial complete problems. Mm -hmm. that, that, that it's why computer science is there. Right? It's got to provide five suboptimal solutions. Yeah. That's oh, cool. I actually have a tactic uh, at a very low level, but one of the things I found when you get like that, what you're describing also sounds a little bit like technical debt. Um, one of the things I found when reaching you know, into these big monolithic balls of spaghetti mm -hmm. uh, is that, like the game Tetris, 
if you make a gap uh, or you have a hole or something, you don't build on that gap. You try to find, you try to place the bricks anywhere else. And what I do often is I create, when I'm building new features that need to be added, I make sure that anything I add into the system is as much as possible purely functional. Maybe it has internal mutable components. I'm not like being like totally lisp here, yeah. but um, but just make it have an API of clear inputs, clear outputs. Everything that comes in is always going to go in, uh, up, and if it has internal state, you know you have to make sure that you like really encapsulate that internal state so that it's not like leaking into different parts of the program. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's annoying, but it's one way to make sure you don't deepen the problem that you're already in. And then if basically, I go as the clean as you go kind of program. If I'm working on something in a domain and I can see something that can be cleaned up, I clean that up while I'm working on that feature. I don't go into the backlog and I don't rearrange everything. That would just make everybody so ticked off. And I made that mistake many, many times in the first few years of my career. Um, and, but that's like a tactical, a tactical thing. It's one of the reasons why I like the TypeScript stack because you can do object-oriented and you can do functional and they interact very, very well. And you strongly typed. And well, yes. That's fantastic, right? <laughs> okay, so I saw you raising your hand and Five minutes is up. You guys want to keep going? All right. Other people offer suggestions. Please go. Not so much a suggestion, but where I've seen this card happen, teams getting stuck is typically in scope shifts. So when the scope changes, then those reversal and connections to other issues. So I'm curious, how do we think about that? Because the operating assumption I'm hearing in the room is you start the project right and you have depths of expertise, you have other things you map it out properly, that's fantastic, but what happens when the project is shifted in a scope, right? Everybody is stuck. So I do want to ask everyone this, it sounded like this is a technical issue, is it a business issue of the Absolutely. Well, the business issue is the deadline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a deadline for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I do have an answer for the business shifting scope. This is actually one of the key reasons why I'm in this domain, right? Because that's actually welcome which is complete opposite of what typical project management is. However, before I say that, I want to make sure this is a technical question, so I'm not gonna spew something that's not related. The technical question was actually more about a coping mechanism, <coughs> excuse me, for you know, me, if I have to actually provide the solution, when you get overwhelmed, okay. right? This was the technical question. Is there a strategy for breaking down a problem creating artificial boundaries or something to box it out and then come back to the other ones after the fact. Yeah. So I'm really close or clear your memory or right. I'm really close to what you're saying. And uh, there's a book by Uncle Bob, right? Yeah. He's a pretty popular programmer and he has uh, multiple books. They all start with the word clean. Mm -hmm. Clean oh. code, okay, is one of them. There's clean agile. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of clean other things, right? So what you were describing uh, is actually is one of his chapters. Yeah. And yeah, we can clean, yeah. It's, 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 I I'm a big fan of Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob is actually like he's a hater of Scrum because he is a die hard extreme programmer. And some of the things he says is actually I am aligning with him even though I'm not certified in Scrum and everything. So that's all. I would say like uh, try and get uh, an expert who understands the problem, you know? And then go from there. Maybe. But uh, for the technical issue for algorithms, from my understanding, um, part of dealing with algorithms is also understanding the edge cases and programming for those edge cases. Instead of just uh, maybe trying to create a new algorithm that doesn't have an edge case. And that's more on the operational side of this. When you're, talking, when you're first doing the functional side, you have to ensure that you have to, if the operating system is not make, is not moving the, uh, the messages between the data between the cores pro properly, then you, the, the function of it, then it's not going to work, regardless of what operation you do. So yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. Once you get to that stage, when you're in the functional stage, like, like you were saying, right? It's a lot different. Uh, another idea might be adopting uh, ZDM, uh, ZDM, a zero defects methodology. Are you familiar with that at all? 
Uh, basically, um, back in the, uh, this was something I read on um, Joel on software. Uh, the idea was that in Microsoft, what they would do is, in order to meet deadlines, programmers would cut corners. Like, for example, there was a random number generator, and somebody said that the random number generator should also ge should always generate four, because that is a number that they generated randomly, and, uh, and it passed the test. And what they would do is they would just wait for the QA person to say, hey, this only ever generates four, and then go back and fix it as a bug. And what um, what they decided was, okay, in order to, it's much harder to estimate a bug because you don't know what caused it than it is to estimate a feature because you do know most cases how to implement it. And because so in order to do that, we made it a priority that all bugs, all defects, must be fixed before any features can be added. And that's, um, and it's an extreme uh, solution, but that might be what we need in your case, like, is to go to the business people and say, we need to find a stop where we have a feature freeze, and then we are going to go in and we are going to basically fix the bugs that we know we have, and then from that point on, anytime we discover a bug, it, it goes into ZDM mode. Yeah. Yeah, we just went through that. I had my uh, my product alliance and uh, team telling me, "Hey, we, we you you got we got to do red teams here. We got to make decisions on what features that are what uh, um, what features within the function of this code we really need and don't need." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "No, the red team will start on the operational, but this is security stuff, like you said. I don't do good enough for government, and that's what a lot of enterprises will put out." Good enough for government because now they have fifty million dollars in billing for uh, for for bugs and and changes and additions that happen after that, right? I mean that's how IBM and those companies exist. Okay, so our time's up. Uh, final vote for we can go to another topic or we can continue. Roman vote. We have one, two down, three, four, three down. Four, oh, more downs. Okay. <laughs> So thank you. We have met the definition of them for our agreement. So we have uh, those are the ones. These are the four. So I'm gonna just pick this one. Wait, there's an orange. There's a yellow. Okay. Uh, is blockchain tech going to um, be adopted by the government for currency? Or how do you choose between waterfall, Scrum, extreme programming, and Kanban? Which one? Which one do you guys want? Yeah. Blockchain or combat? Blockchain or combat? Blockchain or combat? Come on. Combat. Combat. Oh, I'm sorry, not combat, but different styles. I'm sorry. So the question is, do you? How do you choose between waterfall, scrum, XP, combat? So waterfall is not part of agile uh, right. domain. Scrum, XP, and combat is. Okay. Do you guys know what they are? No. Yes. No. Okay. Yeah, you, I'm sure you do. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a quick five minute speed. Waterfall is a traditional project management that came out of World War II. Even the person that actually wrote the original document on it on the page two says it's not going to work on anything that's complex. But military don't care, so they just made it the standard. And since it's part of the military, and we declare we want World War II from it, so fuck it, everybody has it. Okay. Okay. Don't review the process though. So yeah. that it's where you, you do your requirements gathering in the beginning. Get all the requirements you need. Right. And all of it. Don't care if it takes two years. Then, okay? then you plan everything. You analyze the shit out of it. Then you write an analysis document. Then you do a design document. Then you do the programming, development work. Once you finish the programming, and QA. if we have time, we have budget, we'll do the QA. And then after you finish QA, you go live. And then you celebrate that you found out the app has 5,000 bugs. Waterfall, or building class, right? Or Navy's ship is gonna be canceled, right? Like the, what is that, Zoom lot ships? Those things are a billion dollars at least? Okay, canceled, sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry, keep going. that's gooey. Scrum is the most popular one. Scrum framework is one of the frameworks in Agile. You have three roles, a Scrum Master, Product Owner, and a Scrum Master, no. Yes. Scrum Master, Product Owner, and Scrum Developer. Okay, you have five ceremonies and you have three artifacts and that's it. Really easy to learn, very hard to do. Extreme programming is the most popular at the beginning of Agile Manifesto about 20 years ago. 
And it's all, all about, about two developers working together in one set of keyboard and one computer. Pair programming. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. pair programming. They're not cuddling or anything. One is a driver, the other one's a navigator. Every 45 minutes, they shift. They really focus on value driven. So everything is a user story from the product side. All about bringing value, bugs be damned. But due to the way they do, most important thing is test driven development. All tests are automated. Programmers write the test, these robots run all night. They fix thousands of, I mean, they catch thousands of bugs every night, okay? Extreme programming. Close to, I, the, close to the business on that too. Very close. close. Both Scrum and XP is heavy on business value. If you don't give me business value, get out of here. Finally, Kanban. It's a word from Japan. A Japanese guy who was trying to perfect Toyota learned it in Piggly Wiggly in America, somewhere in Ohio. Uh, long story, Georgia. I'm gonna cut it short. Georgia. It's all about flow. Oh, is this Georgia? Yes, it's Georgia. Georgia it is. All about flow. It's about continuously flowing. Okay. In different stages. And it has a visual board. We are actually using the Kanban board. We have a backlog lane, in progress lane, and a done lane. You can have multiple lanes. It's all about visually to see things, transparency, and flow. The difference between Kanban versus everything else is that it does not have a time box. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, That's okay. it. Those are the three stops. Yeah, Anything okay. to add for me? A continuous flow of work. Okay. So you gotta call it yeah. All right. Here we go. Five minutes. Okay. I think you can choose if a Microsoft random number generator. <laughs> <laughs> it's always four. It's always four. Uh, you can mix and match. So Jira is an excellent example about this. Uh, as a Jira administrator, I don't prefer using the Kanban board as my primary visual. I actually like doing a task function on a drop-down traditional spreadsheet matter. But the crews, the developers themselves, they love the visual Kanban or Scrum board, which uh, this particular product has. And the Scrum board is literally just a Kanban board that allows itself to be time boxed to the Scrum. But people are visual. 97% of the world's population are visual. Therefore, if you have a visual tool, as opposed to a text-based tool or whatnot, programmers being weird, old school ones love text. Normal humans don't. And since programming and developing and everything else is drifted into the human arena, as opposed to the uh, computer savant that it was back in the 70s and 80s, Visual is the way to go for most development teams unless they are doing something that is truly data intensive. So a data analyst will still want to be text-based. Uh, a a data-based uh, developer is going to put, you want to be text-based, but pretty much everybody else in your organization is going to be more visual-based. Therefore, using a Kanban board works for most functions and it works across the domains from business to the developers all the way through. All right, you next. Oh, um, for me, I think uh, there's a couple things. So one is uh, your company culture, uh, in which way you, you need to go, uh, well, can go. So whether or not um, projects are run from a waterfall perspective, but you try and do it in a little bit different way, um, but you still have to report in that structure. Um, and then also uh, the context of the work that you're doing. So um, talking about software development with maybe a larger team or a smaller team. If you're doing a smaller team, XP might be a little more um, quicker for you to, to work in. Um, for me, Kanban, uh, in the true sense of, of the actual, not just using a board like this, but um, understanding the flow and identifying bottlenecks in the different stages. Uh, I think that lends itself to um, production support because unlike Scrum where you have a time box, Kanban allows for um, highest priority bugs to inject themselves and 
cause for a pause for certain developers to, to work on those because it's impacting the <coughs> Um, one of the things I really liked about Kanban when I was using it was that if you uh, you talk about visual uh, identity, uh, and from a managerial perspective, just seeing how many items are in a particular column. Mm -hmm. Like for example, let's say that you have like a whole bunch of items in progress. Well, you don't want to take more stuff out of the backlog until the programmer is finished up. And when you do, uh, when somebody does finish up their thing in progress. You basically assign them, to say, hey, can you help this other engineer? Yep, yep. Very important. Mm -hmm. Right. Same with like everything's in QA, you only have two QA engineers. It's like you take some people who normally do things, it's like do whatever you can to take the workload off the QA engineers because our QA is getting backed up. So the way I would pick and choose or recommend this is our consultant in this, what I recommend companies to do is this. Step one is take a look at your problem scope. What are you trying to solve? Okay? If your work is complex, there is a lot of unknowns. You can't figure it out. It's very important to have a time box because you got to lock it down so you can make a decision quickly. And I would recommend Scrum for that. Right? Now, next step is this. What about your work scope is very staged. It's very cut and dry. No complexity. It's an assembly line. Right? Then I would recommend using Kanban. Right? Now, also, a lot of people that you, if you have to consult developers, they work a little bit different from operational side. Operational side like help desk or system administration, network administration, cybersecurity, they work things differently. They work better using Kanban framework just because the flow is important. But there's a huge problem with that because they like to keep 50 million stickies in progress. Notice mm -hmm. we don't crash. We do one topic at a time. This is incredibly important. Typically, when I hire people, when you say you're multitasking, I'm not hiring you because human brains, you have 30% overhead when you thrash two tasks per day. 30% of my labor I'm gonna pay you is wasted because of overhead. So if you're a multitasker, I don't hire people like that because they suck in real life. In software world, okay. Yeah, well, that's probably the core of right the time. And yeah. on that part, uh, there's also some part of the spiel on the extreme program I like to share. We are over time though, so let me know if you want me to, because food is ready. Yeah. Because food. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We're not just going to go over